This prompt is going to work out whether a clarifying question is required. This prompt is going to ask that clarifying question, and this prompt is going to generate a question based on the user's response. Hey, it's Pete, and today I'm going to help you make your agent more conversational by injecting it with memory and enabling it to ask clarifying questions when those questions are too vague. So to give the bot a knowledge source, I've set up the knowledge base with T-Mobile's support site. And as you can see, if I ask a question that should be really device specific, it just responds with, we don't know what device this is for, so the response is kind of useless. So what we want to do is get the bot to start asking clarifying questions. Okay, let's get started. First up, let's set up the API call here. Add the API key, add the body here. I'm going to add the variable prompt. Boom, that's done. I'm going to grab the JavaScript block and expose VoiceFlow's inbuilt memory to a variable called conversation history. As a note, we'll be servicing this variable soon, so you won't have to do this. Now I'm going to create a super simple prompt. Based on conversation history, generate a question that's ideal for retrieval augmented generation. Generate this question and nothing else. Now I'm going to take out another JavaScript step, which is going to populate that prompt variable with the conversation history the amount of chunks I want to return, and I'll turn synthesis off. Okay, let's give this a test. Hmm, why isn't that working? Oh, uh, duh, forgot the URL. That worked. Now it's returning JSON objects, so we'll need to stringify that. Okay, we're returning everything, it's looking good. Now we're gonna use the chunk score to determine if we want to show information to the LLM. That way we can just avoid unnecessary calls and let it go to a fallback if we need. That's done, all right. Now let's do the first thing, the clarifying question checker. To do this, we'll use chunks and use a question. Okay, let's start writing this out. I'm using single quotation marks here so the LLM knows what I'm referring to each time I mention that. That way I don't need to inject the variable into the prompt multiple times. Let's give it a test. Right, it works. Now I wanna make this a little bit more deterministic. So let's add some structure to the prompt. We're going to add an output format to the prompt, which should help with this. Okay, give it a test. Perfect, that works. But we're also gonna to need to pass the information onto our next prompt, so let's make sure the prompt does that too. Hmm, that didn't work. All right, let's change that to GPT-4 Turbo, and no, that sucked as well. All right, I'm gonna add some more detailed instructions. I'll make it use symbols rather than numbers here, just in case a number popped up in the response and threw things off. Also, I might add a bit about asking questions for device-related questions. Let's test this out. Yeah, generally as you test things out, you find these edge cases and then you kind of hone in on your prompt and kind of make it work. It worked. Wait, what the f is a cool pad? I've never heard of them. Maybe it keeps you cool in summer or maybe it's like a house that's cool. <laughs> Who knows? All right, let's add some logic here to make the flow a little bit more deterministic and write the prompt that will actually do the clarifying question. Seriously, every time I say clarify, I think clarified butter. Oh, home would rule. Okay, anyway, let's write the next prompt. Give it a test. This works pretty well. Maybe it's a little bit too robotic. Let's add a system prompt here for personality and give some examples. Give it a test. Woohoo! All right, this is working. Oh, I've just realized you could have a never ending loop here if the LLM was being silly. Let's fix that up here with a counter. I'm just gonna add this counter here. All right, let's give it a test. How do I make a phone call on my phone? It's done something weird here. Let's fix this up with the prompt. I think if I had a end example, so uh, yeah, I think it was kind of taking that into account and using that in the prompt. All right, yeah, weird. All right, let's run it again. Okay, so it's asking me what type of call I'm gonna try and make. Let's just say regular. Now it's asking me the model of a phone. Let's say, I don't know, iPhone. Please work. Yes, sick. This worked. Okay, we got a hyperlink too. Wow, so rad. This is pretty cool. All right, let's try something else. Uh, I don't know, how do I pay my bill? Hmm, looks like the user question prompt has stuffed up here. See. This is what prompt engineering is kind of all about. It's iterating slowly on your prompts, getting them to work together. Let's update that. I think we'll add last utterance variable here. So it prioritizes that. Now try again. And we'll say local calls on an iPhone. That worked. Now let's try ask how to pay a bill and see if the context switch worked. Cool, it worked and it kept the context. Boom. Okay, now let's set up a direct debit for the bill or something. Sweet, this has still kept the context of the iPhone and we'll say auto pay. 
Oh, wow, it's working really nicely. It's even hyperlinked to the auto pay terms and conditions too. That's pretty rad. Okay, to wrap it up, how are these prompts working? Well, we have a prompt that is working out whether a clarifying question is needed. This part is the instructions. This part is setting the output format. And then we have an important instruction at the end because of the fact that LLMs tend to pay more attention to the instructions at the end of a prompt. And the clarifying question prompt, we have context, we give it instructions and the examples along the output formatting at the end. Boom. I hope you enjoyed Pete's prompts and remember, stay curious.